Welcome back to the channel. This is Madness to the Method. Today's camera that I'm looking at is this. The Canon EOS 60D. Now, understand that I am not a Canon shooter. I'm not overly familiar with the Canon breed as a whole. This is the very first DSLR from Canon that I've ever tried. And I had to borrow this one and I have to give it back very soon so I've got to spit out this video and get it back to them today. Now, basic information about the camera that I understand, it's the, uh, from 2010, it's 18 megapixel CMOS sensor and it has a 3 inch flippy screen on the back and it was the first DSLR that I understand to actually have the flippy screen as a feature. Now the equivalent model in the Nikon range would have been the D7000, but I don't have a D7000, I have a D7100, in fact I have two D7100s, I'm filming on one of them right now. That's the, uh, basically my benchmark. It's, now it's a, initial impressions, it is a uh, very good solid camera that I can see. Weighty in the hand, but about the same as the uh, aforementioned D7100, which would be, uh, yeah, that. And it came with a, uh, it did come with, it come with a lens, 28 to 80, which I'm pretty sure is the uh, older film era lenses, but hey, free shit is good shit, right? Initial impressions are pretty good. The interface, on the other hand, is a kind of a, takes a, a bit of getting used to for me. I mean, for example, turning the camera on with a Nikon, you had the uh, on-off switch around the front, and you could just flip it. It's one-handed operation, basically, on, off. But with the Canon, it's a two-handed operation with the switch way over here. And that kind of, uh, yeah. So kind of a wind of a nick on there. There we go, menu. At least menu is kind of a, hello, there we go, menu. The menu interface is completely different. It's, scro it's like scrolling horizontally. How much battery power do we actually have? 16%, great, oh well. <laughs> Not too bad, but at least the in, it's fairly straight, straightforward menu setup. So it's easy to learn. It's easy to navigate. Quality, exposure, compensation, ISO, live view, shoot. All the stuff that you need is easily accessible. So that's a good thing. One particular thing I've noticed about this camera that when I put the camera to my eye, I can actually the position of the uh, front mode dial is uh, easily accessible with my index finger and it's kind of uh, easier to use than the Nikon which is up the front but on the other hand the back mode dial is the uh, this one I have to actually release my grip on the camera to operate it so it's kind of even there with the Nikon it's easy I can easily I could without losing grip on the camera I can operate the mirrored road rear mode dial and uh, the front mode dial while I'm not holding the camera to my eye but to my eye it kind of feels a bit awkward to reach that front dial so I'm going to call it even for both the Nikon and Canon there. Now focus points the Canon EOS 60D has about eight focus points compared to say the contemporary D7000's 39 or the T7100's 51 points but the uh, autofocus is still very fast and snappy. Well, comparative. Comparative for a mid range DSLR, the EOS 1, the EOS, like the EOS 1 that I, uh, whatever model, I'm not familiar with Canon models, but that was really fast and really nice to use. But I only tried that in the shop, so I didn't really have a time to, the time to actually ring it out like I have with this thing. Now, the one thing that, uh, I am going to say that Nikon is better at is the uh, Canon only has a single SD card slot but the uh, Nikon has two slots so if I'm actually shooting a wedding and I shot one two weeks ago I can back up all my shots on the second card I can't do that with the uh, Canon although I can get some very awkward difficult shots with the uh, screen I can just flip it up and hold it above my head and well that actually would be nice but well I guess you can't have everything at this price point what can I say, the uh, image quality, I have to talk about the image quality, com is comparable between them, 18 megapixels, 24 megapixels, there's not really that great of a difference between them, and the rendition is very similar, pound for pound, lens for lens, 
you got a lot of good lenses for Canon and Nikon. I mean, with the Nikons, the Nikons do have the advantage is that you can use old vintage legacy glass, and you've got a wider range of good, cheap lenses to use with the Nikons. But the Canons, I mean, back in '87 when they changed to the EF EF mount, they pretty much abandoned their previous lenses, and you can't use the old FD FL lenses on them. So, boo. If you want good glass for Canon, you've got to shell out for the uh, top tier L series glass, which I've heard from all accounts is very is wonderful, is sublime, but it's horribly expensive. And if I'm going to spend that kind of money, well, I'll stick with the system that I've got, which is the Nikon. But overall, it's a good, solid feeling camera. It's very solid in the hands. It feels good. I can, uh, yeah, it's a, it's nice and weighty and stable. It's about the same build quality as the Nikon, even though, and even better because this one's made in Japan, unlike the Nikon, which is Thailand. I mean, you want Japanese-made Nikons, you've got to go with the high-end, top-end, top-end professional stuff like, well, the D3S, or, the, you know what I mean? Canon makes all their stuff in Japan, or at least they did until recently, which is very good. You get proper good quality. You can't go wrong with the Canon system. What did I just do? Ugh. <laughs> like I said, I'm not overly familiar. I mean, the the buttons have changed the dials, the autofocus, drive. What did I just turn this off for? Duh. AF. There's a <sighs> AF. It's two handed operation here. Look at that. AF. Drive. Button. Yeah, that's nice. Everything is in a button. I mean, if you want to delete something, for example, oh, never mind. I'm sort of going all over the place here, but the point is, everything would make sense if you were a Canon shooter and you could just shoot without thinking. A good camera, in my way of thinking, is a camera that gets out of your way and helps you to make great photos, or at least good photos, technically, in a technical sense. I have a, a lot of trouble with the Canon because I'm not used to it, having to... Uh, think and slow down and actually think about the settings that I want and I've got a and it takes a lot longer than the Nikon because since I've been shooting Nikons for 20 years I just know the system backwards and forwards and I can just change it without barely thinking about it but if I was a Canon shooter for that long and I had to try a Nikon it would be the exact same complaint in the opposite direction so it's hardly uh, it's hardly a deal breaker if I started building it started building a Canon a system from scratch I had to if I had to build a system from scratch and I didn't know photography I couldn't go wrong with either Nikon or Canon and neither could you so don't let you shy away from that but there you go that's my impression it's a good camera a very good camera and I like it very much as I take it as a representative example of the breed and I'll probably end up trying more of them in the future considering the uh, College that I'm going to to update some of my uh, photography skills has Lono bodies, both Nikon and Canon, and I'll be trying a lot of them as often as I can. So stay tuned for that. Now I'm going to show you some uh, photos in a minute when I end the uh, live portion of this video because I'm lazy and I'm only going to do this in one take. So bear with me. This is Madness to the Method, and you have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and so on. Have a great day.